Hey, what's up, what's up, everybody? All right, so um, today I just wanna give you guys a quick breakdown on the watch list for tomorrow and uh, what to expect, right? Some, uh, some figures that you can keep your alerts on and that can potentially have a good move in the next like few days, right? So the market right now is still full of volatility and everything is still getting shorted. Every, every time we get these uh, huge green candles, you know, no matter where you see these trends and everything, uh, we always end up getting shorted at the end of the day. So any bullish play, uh, sorry, bullish setup, uh, it runs, okay? So you can definitely play some calls, but uh, overall you're still stuck with a better position at the end of the day. So ultimately what, that, what that's basically meaning is that the bearer sentiment has taken over uh, completely and has been taken over completely since the start of the year. And it, it's been very difficult to, uh, to, to swing some good plays because this market has been gapping up and has been gapping down uh, some very aggressive points. And it, it's, it, it's hard to make a watch list, right? So it's, it's a retail week. Again, it's a short week. So uh, the volatility has been a little bit insane because of the feds and then Biden and then all kinds of other stuff that's going on. Regardless of everything that's going on, just remember the ultimate uh, uh, trend, which is bearish, and that there's always room for opportunity to either scalp, uh, swing trade, day trade, whatever it is, whether upside or downside, there's opportunity on both sides intraday, okay? Shorting the top, buying the bottom, like it, it's, it's a mixture of everything. So don't, don't bag with something that you shouldn't, uh, if you got to cut loss, cut loss. Okay, don't think twice. Uh, but anyways, ES right here, uh, we're going to talk about ES and the uh, uh, the levels that you guys can see for some trend changes. The trend change can potentially happen uh, down here. As you guys all well know that on Friday, Friday and Thursday, Kramer had posted this um he, he mentioned this news article about saying like, do not buy stocks right now. And <laughs> Uh, we called it the inverse Kramer. The inverse Kramer meaning like, okay, then do the opposite of what he says, mainly, mainly uh, buy stocks, right? So this thing ended up gapping up uh, and it, it, uh, gap, it, it had a gap and go. So basically it, it just kept running. And then the next day we just gapped down like a hundred points, like, no, like nothing and like it's uh, uh, something normal. And then again, we come back and, and run up because of, uh, Biden speaking or the Fed speaking today, whoever was speaking, I don't know what they said and I don't care. So what we have here is the confirmation that we have in uh, a small accumulation zone. Okay, and, and this is a level, uh, the 37 level it is a nice weekly level on, on the uh, bigger time frame, right? So just so you guys know where we're at, we're kind of right here and we have a first green candle. This can definitely turn red by the end of the week. Who knows? It could just be a small doji uh, towards the end. Uh, it could be a hammer um, for all I know. Wh whatever it is, uh, we still have a, a couple of days into the week. Uh, so come down to the floor. And, and just to go look at the previous price action, look at what happened every time we based out, okay? So we based out right here, and then we ran. This one, unfortunately, we based out and then dropped. So now that we dropped and we blew past this one, we create another little accumulation. So your buy area becomes this point right here, that 37.15, uh, and then the bottom, which is 36.75. The break above for the continuation for this would be anything above 38. Psychologically over 38, a lot of traders are going to get in. What that's going to do is going to cause a nice little run up and the potential target would be 38.80. Maybe it looks too uh, too far off or or too much of a uh, of a crazy move for us to even experience, but you guys have seen that we've been gapping down like crazy and we've been gapping up like crazy. Whatever it is, mainly gap downs. And a lot of people are going to call this little gap area uh, gap fill and everything. Technically, what happens after a big drop, you base, right? You base out, 
And then what we're doing right now is we're, we are retesting that same level, that 3880, all the way into that 39. Does it have to happen? By no means. This thing right now, as you can see right now, that is trending down. Features are still open right now. And uh, we don't know where we're going to open. I mean, we can legit just open way down here again or, or even lower. Like, who knows, right? Um, but we're kind of like in no man's land right now. So there's not a proper trade. So use the pre-market levels. Um, you guys should know how to use them. All you got to do is go on a smaller time frame. I'll give you an example. Um, here, here's a pre-market. Here's some pre-markets. And then here's your pre-market. We broke above every single level. And then we hit the uh, yesterday's low right here. We broke above yesterday's high. Okay, sorry, this is your pre-market. And then th this uh, yesterday's high basically broke above, came down and retested this specific level, bounced, and then came back down into the same level. And then now we're dropping again. So just an example on how you can use the uh, previous day lows and previous day highs and pre-market levels. And there's actually a video on that too, if you guys haven't checked it out, okay? So now what, what I'm gonna do is because we're kind of in no man's land, I'm gonna give you a few tickers to take note of. Uh, so for the first ticker, uh, as you all know, uh, DAL, I'm gonna give it to you guys. And what I like about DAL is the uh, airlines that they're not really moving with the market, but they're also dropping with no, no like true fundamental things to back it, back it up, right? Which is cool. Uh, that just tells me that there's going to be a great dip by opportunity for all airlines in general pretty soon. Uh, regardless of that, I'm sure there's more going on behind that. And there's fundamentals to back this up or to give it a reason to push back up um, if we can even push up, push up at all. So I'm using this 30 level as a support. Okay. Uh, 29 is kind of like that confirmation that it's just going to keep on dropping further and i want to show you guys the weekly on dal looks crazy because we we basically gave up all the gains from right here we couldn't even trend up any further and then finally we gapped down last week uh and then we just rallied on down and then we're, we're right here we're kind of like uh, again in the middle of nowhere but we're at some good levels uh no matter what you're you're thinking a psychological number of 30 that can capture a lot of investors' uh, attention. Okay, and I'm not saying that they're gonna load the boat here. It's just, you can literally start loading up. If you have like a thousand to invest and you start with like 50 bucks, um, you know, that's basically like a share and a half or something. Uh, but I like this, that it, it, it can potentially be a bottom here. Number one thing is that we're kind of squeezing down here. It's almost like we're building this little wedge down here into a psychological number. So a potential double double bottom here based on the 30 level with a nice little squeeze here. I like it. Anything over 30 is going to be a long. Okay, I'm not saying that it's going to hit 33 soon, but 33 can be a potential target. Now, the market is coming down right now, so I don't know where we're going to open. The cool thing about this is that it's a very, very simple play. Okay, so if you're in call positions here, right, and, and, and you guys got in, your stop loss legit becomes uh this level here <clears throat> so if you know that the 30 level rejects you automatically can instantly cut your loss and at that 2960 you can enter for puts so if you don't get this right so if you don't get this pop like this this becomes your target then you know that automatically you're going to get the instant rejection, which will lead you with a nice drive like this. Okay, so that's your scenario. So if you're in calls, again, I'm going to repeat this again. If you're in calls here, your stop loss is here. But your stop loss becomes your entry for puts. So there's no reason that this trade or your day should be red. Because now you know, like, okay, this pattern is rejecting. So the pattern is going to drive it all the way down. So therefore, I'm going to grab puts and I'm going to write it all the way down because there's a potential that there's going to be a flush due to a bearish market. Now, if the market holds and we, we stay steady overnight, then there's a higher potential that we may break out over 30 
and push all the way to that 3130. So this is my first target, okay? You can see I have all my alerts here. And then in the morning, I'm gonna set some more based on the pre-market levels. And that's the uh, only time that I'm going to be free. The rest, I'm gonna leave it up to my alerts and then set a trailing stop based on the uh, brackets and then go about my day. Above this uh, 31, 3120, we're gonna come up here and people are gonna call the gap fill at 32. After that gap fill at 32, we're gonna hit the supply of 33. So once you get to that point in the next like three trading days or two trading days, if we get there, then the contract should be in the money and then you can scale out of your position and just look for long plays all the way back up. Otherwise, we're just gonna keep on uh, dropping back on down, right? So it's a simple plan for DAL. It's uh, bulletproof because definitely I can't control what happens overnight, but I can definitely control how I'm gonna plan this into tomorrow. Okay, so that's that. The next one is gonna be Disney. Uh, you guys know that I've been talking about Disney and the weekly timeframes, it's insane. Like the, the levels that we're trading in right now, this is like the last demand that it has right here. Okay, so that's why those two lines are yellow. I have these down here just in case the market gets a little crazy snap down. I just got an alert for ES dropping down a little bit more, 3740. Um, but the weekly levels for Disney is crazy. Like everybody had an opportunity to, to grab a dip by here when COVID hits. Everybody was so excited that this thing went below 100 and investor made tons of money. Like I myself made tons of money because I sold way up here, which is amazing. Right. And then I started adding more shares down here when we hit 130, 120, 110, uh, and even 100. So I started buying some. I'm not in full portfolio. Okay. I, I'm just adding a little bit here and there, uh, not tons, but I'm definitely building into this position long term wise. So I'm expecting to see the same type of reaction that we saw here, except the difference here is that it may go sideways before it runs back up. Just like the market in general, we may go, we need to go sideways in order for anything to go back up, basically create value, create a, a healthy economy, find ways to uh, grow and fix, fix the recession and inflation uh, fears and everything else that we're facing. Uh, when we get out the woodworks, I don't know, but all I can do is plan and set my, uh, my plans and my day trades accordingly. So I'm gonna go on the four hour and I'm gonna show you guys something uh, pretty awesome here. Here's your drop. Here's your base. What happened there? We basically broke down, came down to that 91, and we were coming up with a retest, okay? This is the type of criteria that we have for Disney. So we have a, a, a drop retest right here. Tomorrow, this is going to be, this is going to determine the direction of Disney in the next couple of days and how you can enter this position. Number one. Did the retest reclaim this demand? Over 94, I am going long. Very, very simple. 93.30, all right, 93.40, 93.50. I am going short because the rejection, basically this is your retest and this can come back down into the 91 and drop even further, or we hold 94 and we go above. Very, very simple trade here. The criteria is here for this type of setup it's a drop based drop with the retest. And now we want this retest to reclaim demand or reject demand. One of the two is going to happen here or here. Okay. Remember, with the bearish market, Disney has a higher potential of rejecting. But if the market goes bearish and Disney stays green, that is going to show relative strength in the market. If market is bullish and Disney goes red, that shows weakness. Therefore, short that thing. If market goes bullish and this thing breaks above 94, let's go long, go long on Disney. Okay, very, very simple. Hopefully you guys, you understand. Uh, a couple more tickers that I want to um, bring to attention to you guys. It's gonna be GS. GS here, it's a, uh, you gotta be careful with the spreads though because they're a little bit wide. You can see the accumulation right here. So all I'm gonna tell you guys is to keep alerts right here and keep alerts right here. Okay, that 280 and the uh, 287, 80, 288, that's where you wanna keep alerts. That is gonna be a range breakout. 
JPM. It's another one. So basically some of the financials. There you go. All right, so that 116, 80, 117 range breakouts or that bottom right here of like 113, 11250 range breakouts. Okay, so JPM, GS, Disney, DAF. I'm gonna show you a couple more. V, this is on the weekly level and we're kind of accumulating right here. So it's the same thing that we're doing right here. This 190 and that like 190, uh, 196.40, 196.50 area um, range alerts, okay? So V, let's do MA as well. Keep track of MA. I think this one's just a little bit tighter. So this one, all you gotta do is this. That's it, okay? So the 320 or the break below 315, that's it. Okay, very simple. So if you're following V, make sure you follow MA as well. MA, uh, bigger spreads and uh, the bigger returns, but it moves a little bit different, almost like GS. So instead of trading MA or GS, you can go with uh, ticker V or ticker JPM. So just giving you guys the better uh, options, right? Okay, last one, Amazon. I've said this about Amazon plenty of times. If you guys are charting anything that's in the past, do not look at it because what happened to Amazon, it became a new ticker here and none of the past matters. It's a new company and what it's doing now, it's, it's building structure and it's uh, developing its own um, movements and developing its own characteristics and everything is still adjusting, okay? The economy basically is down, okay? Uh, we're going through some recession and inflation and rate hikes and uh, so much stuff. In the meantime, Amazon just had a split. Amazon in general is a great company, but at the same time, it, it had that split that made it a lot cheaper to catch a lot of investors attention. Because of that, it's still building structure, okay? So don't go looking at everything in the past and then saying that that is support. Some of you guys are charting this thing and calling this support, okay? It's not, please don't do that. If you want to, that's fine. Do what you do best. But look at Amazon now. Okay, since the day it, it split, literally same thing like Apple. It dropped all the way down and now it's creating this nice little uh, flag. This is a bear flag. Okay, if, you, if I've never seen a bear flag before, this is it right there. Okay, there you go. Whether it's a channel, whether it's a flag, whatever it is, if it breaks above or breaks below, those are your entries, okay? Now, I wouldn't buy calls up here. I definitely would use the uh, pre-market levels maybe here around the uh, 109, 60, 70, or 110. Above 110, you should go long, uh, but breaking below this like 106, go short all the way probably to 102, maybe to 100 psychologically. So you would wanna see something like this, drop all the way down. Okay, so this is another one to keep track of, guys. Uh, I think it's a good one because it's a lot cheaper now. But in my opinion, I would still give it like another week or two just to develop um, its, its structure. So just gave you guys a few things to watch for uh, in the next couple of days. Uh, I think the market is still doing good. It's, it's up and down, up and down. And a lot of opportunity that we can get into, whether it's going to be puts or calls in today, whether you swing puts or swing calls. This market is amazing, guys. So don't ever think that it's um, it's trash or anything like that, or or you can't understand it. If you don't understand it, please ask. Okay. Uh, but anyways, I'm gonna leave you guys with that. Uh, hopefully, this helps you guys in the next couple of days. And I won't be around, but definitely set those alerts on those tickers. All right. So I'll see you guys on the next one and uh, stay green.